All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over-the-top beautiful, mid-October day here on Labor Day weekend. Uh, Labor Day weekend as we close out the summer of 2021 on this beautiful day in the collapse of global industrial civilization at Bugs in a Jar Farm in the Finger Lakes of New York. It is now Saturday, September 4th, 2021. So I have been threatening to start a new feature here on Collapse Chronicles. And so we're going to start today and I'm going to try to make this a regular feature where I'm just going to take all of the, the various brands of hopium, apocaloptimism, greenwashing crap, uh, diluted thinking, clueless morons, mix them all together and throw them into Saturday and pay attention to some stuff that people with brains so guys you know obviously all you can do at this point if you are a doomer who understands that we are doomed uh all you can do is laugh and uh i, I don't know whether i pity these uh hopium soaked apocaloptimist or whether uh i'm jealous of them and of course uh a lot of them are just absolutely, well, I don't want to use, well, they are lying. Uh, a lot of these people I'm getting ready to quote know damn well uh, what the situation on this planet is. So anyway, I shared part of this excellent essay by uh, Canadian ecologist William Reese and whoever Megan... Seabird is. I'll have to find out. So tomorrow I am going to uh, make my doomsday sermon this essay uh, titled Through the Eye of a Needle, an eco-heterodox perspective on the renewable energy transition. This is one of the most spot-on analyses uh, that I have ever read in the doomosphere that just sums it up. Uh, anyone who has not heard my interview with ecologist William Reese, and as I say, not sure who Megan is, but she obviously understands how doomed we are. And uh, so anyway, so what they do, as we'll hear tomorrow, they just spell out in this book-length essay with like 120 citations to other studies that we are doomed. And then in the very last paragraph, the very last closing paragraph, they make this absolutely, you know, I'm assuming it's a wink, wink, nudge, nudge to the doomers. Anyway, uh, this, this, uh, I don't know whether to be embarrassed for William and Megan or to secretly high five them for, you know, trying to save a few people from committing suicide. Take it away. To close out, this is not a spoiler alert, don't worry. To adopt a biblical metaphor. It may very well be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for humanity to shift its prevailing paradigm and embark on a planned, voluntary descent from a state of overshoot to a steady state, harmonic relationship with the ecosphere in just a decade or two. On the other hand, history shows that virtually all important achievements have only ever arisen from a dogged pursuit of the seemingly impossible. To contemplate the alternative is unthinkable. Well, uh, 
again, uh, I, I know William Reese uh, spends his entire life contemplating the unthinkable, which is becoming the thinkable uh, every day. Uh, William uh, Reese, I don't know about Megan, William knows damn well uh, that it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is uh, for humanity to become sustainable. Okay, I am sorry, I can't remember which one of my, I really appreciate my alert Doomer listeners sending me examples of hopium. So uh, this one is some unintentional hopium by this absolute clueless moron. I've mentioned him before. I guess he's some sort of economist named Tyler Durden. Tyler Durden, uh, who gets the Clueless Moron Award of the Day in this essay, The Demographic Time Bomb. Yes. Uh, humans are the reason humans are dying out. Thank you, uh, Tyler. We are not having enough babies. It's that simple. And then Tyler breaks it down that, uh, well, of course, you know, he's looking at it from an economic perspective. He has no interest in the ecological perspective. Uh, so what he's talking about is how we need to sustain sustain the global population at 8 billion people, preferably, uh, you know, get it higher so we can sell more products to more clueless morons. So I love this absolute unintentional hopium. This is uh, probably the, the most genuine uh, hopium of the day here. Take it away, Tyler, with your unintentional hopium. Demographic collapse is inevitable. It is already baked into existing birth rates and likely trends. Still, it's not the end of the world. It won't even be the end of humanity. Damn it. But it will be. It, demographic collapse will be the end of an economic paradigm of higher growth, higher consumption, and higher output that has prevailed for the past 200 years. You know, uh, Tyler Durden, like the vast majority of planet Earth, celebrating the last 200 years uh, that the economic paradigm of higher growth, higher consumption, and higher output, meaning more and more and more and more and more of this stuff being ripped out of the planet to sell to uh, clueless morons what has happened over the past 200 years. We need to fight to protect this is what uh, Tyler is saying, and uh, we cannot have any threats to the dominant paradigm. Uh, okay, let's see. No, we're going to end up with Rolling Stone magazine. Okay, have you guys heard of... Uh, this group, I'm sure you have, Avaz, A-V-A-A-Z, always coming out with a new petition to save the planet. So their, their petition of the week is titled, Before the Earth Falls Silent. I notice it is written by somebody named Sam M., Yes, Sam M. is the, uh, is, is the author of this. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I want to completely 
anybody who thinks thinks that Sam Mitchell is the Sam M obviously doesn't know Sam Mitchell, so I don't know. We're going to give Sam M a uh, right up there with Tyler Durden. Okay, before the earth falls silent, take it away, Sam M. There are now only two northern white rhinos left on earth, both of them female. Yes. Uh, Najin and Fatu spend their days grazing in the twilight of existence, each hour another step toward extinction. A million species are standing on that same red line. There are fewer than 80 Amur leopards left, less than 66 Javan rhinos, and maybe only nine vaquitas left in the vast emptying oceans. Humanity has caused the loss of 83% of all wild mammals and half of all plants. Extinction is not a loud, painful roar. It is a silence forever. Okay, we have to stop the genocide of life on Earth. And we have a golden opportunity in the next nine days. In the next nine days, we have an opportunity to stop the genocide of life on Earth. This might be too late for uh, Najin and Fatu. Uh, I guess we should have taken uh, the golden opportunity last time. Okay, here is the golden opportunity to save the planet. World leaders are meeting to forge a new plan to protect nature, but politics are throttling ambition. Yes, so we need a thunderous public call to make, lead make leaders <coughs> follow the science and protect at least half the planet. There you go. I think this is called the bargaining phase of the five, uh, this 30 by 30 or half the earth is called the bargaining phase of uh, the, the stages of grief. Yes. So we need a thunderous public call to make leaders follow the science and protect at least half the planet. You know, we take half. Every other earthling we share the planet with takes half. Unless you're that 30 by 30, then, okay, uh, we take 70% and all the rest of our fellow earthlings combined, they get 30. We get 70, they get 30. All right. Let's take an urgent stand for the orangutans, the bees, the bats, the turtles, the tigers, and every strand in the fragile web of life because it is breaking. Click here to add your name and then pass this on. Okay. So this is the petition they're asking us to sign to save the planet in the next nine days. Quote, we global citizens are deeply concerned by scientists warning that ecosystems critical to sustaining life on Earth could collapse in our lifetimes. We call on you, the United Nations, yes, we call on you to meet existing targets to protect biodiversity, forge a new agreement so that at least 50% of our lands and oceans are protected and restored and ensure our planet is completely and sustainably managed. This must take into consideration the needs of human development. Yes, the uh, saving the planet must take into consideration 
the needs of human development and have the active support of indigenous peoples, this long-term goal for nature can restore harmony with our home. You act like you're already saying goodbye. I guess you're, are you saying goodbye, Najin and Fatu? Sancho Panza is saying goodbye to Najin and Vatu. Okay, from those clueless morons, how about this is climate scientist Adam Sobel. Climate scientist Adam Sobel uh, in CNN, you know, talking, he lives in New York City, uh, one more climate scientist just spelling out how the summer of 2021 uh, is, is ironclad proof that we are doomed. So, uh, okay, so where does uh, he turn on CNN? Okay, <clears throat> notwithstanding all the bad news, there is simultaneously tremendous, tremendous positive momentum on climate. The president, President Joe Biden, and a Democratic majority in Congress are taking the issue more seriously than ever. Well, that's a true statement. Uh, yes, taking the issue more seriously than ever before, and the infrastructure and budget reconciliation bills offer a potentially historic opportunity to make investments in clean energy, climate adaptation, and climate justice that start to take the scale of the problem seriously. The youth climate movement is energized and inspiring. Flat out climate denial is warning, is waning. In the big picture, the climate problem is solvable with existing, existing, not future, with existing technology and resources. Yes, they're called, it's called birth control pills and condoms, <clears throat> and sufficient collective effort and political will, we, the human species, have what it takes to modify our energy system, to minimize future warming, and adapt to protect those most vulnerable from what cannot be prevented. Yes, yeah, so uh, from CNN, let's go over to Amazon Watch. You know, these are people uh, talking about who spend their lives talking, you know, watching the Amazon. All right. Uh, okay, there, the name of this one is how to protect 80% of the Amazon rainforest by the year 2025. The latest science shows that the Amazon rainforest is in danger of flipping toward a drier ecosystem, like a savanna, due to destructive activities such as oil and gas exploration, development of road infrastructure, and industrial agriculture. But, but, we still have time to avert this tipping point before we witness the dieback of this global treasure. Yes. And then I love it when they ask the question, can net zero pledges really protect the Amazon? As governments and global corporations pledge climate action in accordance with the Paris Climate Agreement, they are turning 
to net zero commitments. Okay, what is going on uh, with Rupert Reed? Uh, you know, uh, I have also have an interview with Rupert Reed you can find on here. Uh, so this is an interview from The Independent with Rupert. Uh, you know, he's tied in with the Green Party and Extinction Rebellion over there in England. Uh, Okay, so this is what Rupert Reed, so again, you know, he spends the first two-thirds of the interview talking about how completely screwed up uh, we are, and uh, I love this segue, so take it away, Rupert Reed, and explain to us why, why it's not all over yet. Uh, I do quote, I do think the Green Party needs to step up in relation to this crisis. I have co-created a new organization loosely affiliated to the Green Party called Greens Can. Greens Can, otherwise known as the Greens Climate Action Network. Basically, the idea is that the Green Party, as well as contesting elections, should engage in non-violence, civil, civil disobedience. Uh, he says he hopes this will create a, quote, radical flank to the Green Party, but it would be a moderate flank to Extinction Rebellion a little more careful than Extinction Rebellion is sometimes being, so as not to alienate people, close quote. Uh, his optimism lies in the fractured piecemeal reaction of the public to the worsening environmental crisis, which he believes will kickstart a more grassroots revolution of public prioritize. Quote, I think it is quite possible that we are going to see a big upsurge in workplace-based activism. We may be starting to see that with the creation of lawyers for net zero, for example. It's a useful thought experiment, if our children can't go on symbolic strikes for an hour or a day, then why can't the rest of us? That could be possible to get a significantly larger cohort of people involved in. Yes, so what could be, this is I guess the interview, Ask him, Rupert, what could be the trigger that could take the environmental level to the next level? It is on the imminent horizon, uh, Reed says, COP26. Yes, it's going to be a huge wake-up call. Yes, after the terrible weather in the code red IPCC report, the huge wake-up call is going to be when the world realizes that the world's so-called leaders are definitely not coming to the rescue. If they make any agreement at Glasgow, it is going to be so woefully inadequate. Then, then, there is going to be a huge mobilization opportunity. What I'm seeking to do, along with many other people, is to prepare for that. Really? We don't know exactly what's going to work, but it seems to me that what's going to work is something which is very honest and direct about the situation. <clears throat> but has lower barriers to entry than existing movements such as Extinction Rebellion are perceived to have. This 
could mobilize a much larger phalanx of the population to understand that our government, our so-called leaders, are not coming to rescue us, and that we have to act in a much more direct and dramatic way, and in much larger numbers, we are going to change history. Yes, and we're going to start by signing petitions. Yes, we're all going to sign a petition before the earth falls silent. But uh, anyway, guys, I do want to, I mean, all joking aside, we're going to wind up in Rolling Stone magazine this week from this fellow named Jeff Goodell. Austin, Texas is newest resident. Uh, Jeff Goodell, who's a regular contributor to Rolling Stone, just made the horrendous blunder of moving to Austin, Texas. Uh, and, and now he's realizing that he might have made a mistake. Now, of course, you know, I am a climate refugee from Austin, Texas, up here in New York, where New York has been hit by three hurricanes in the last month, while Austin, Texas has not had a hurricane anywhere near it. There's no way to win. But anyway, uh, Jeff Goodell, this excellent article and uh, F-bomb warning. If uh, you're upset by the F-bomb, you probably just need to turn this off now because we can't have you being offended by the F-bomb. <clears throat> Our Summer from Hell, uh, which starts off, uh, now you can see how it works. This whole climate collapse scenario that writers and scientists have been hollering about for years. And then he just basically, you know, just goes through uh, the summer of 2021 and just, you know, talks about his last 15 years of being a, uh, a climate reporter. Uh, so, since he started you know, into this 15 years ago. We've had Katrina, Sandy, Laura, Ida. I lose track of them all. It's impossible to calculate how many houses have been destroyed, power lines down, roads washed away, lives upended, and lost. And what has changed? Okay, what has changed in the last 15 years? This is Jeff Goodell scratching around for opium. Yes, we have bent down the carbon emissions curve enough to make the truly apocalyptic climate nightmares, otherwise known as five degrees C of warming by 2100, less likely. Clean energy prices have fallen precipitously. We have elected a president who now talks bluntly when he remembers what he was saying, who now talks bluntly and frequently about the climate crisis and has committed to a zero carbon grid by the year 2035. Places like Louisiana have invested billions in coastal resiliency projects. Electric bikes and scooters and cars are proliferating. Media savvy scientists like Michael Mann, yes, media savvy scientists like Michael Mann, Andrea Dutton, Catherine Hayhoe, and Heho and Andrew Dessler are speaking ever more clearly about climate risks. Grassroots activist groups are gaining political power and learning how to use it. Hence what we just heard from Rupert Reed. Climate warriors, climate warriors like former Secretary of State John Kerry are jousting in the fields of diplomacy trying once again to convince the Chinese to step up and show leadership 
in the upcoming international climate negotiations. This is all good. This is all important. But if this, but if this is what it means to wake up to the risks of the climate crisis, then we truly are fucked. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Jeff Goodell and Rolling Stone. This was in Yahoo News. Uh, now, he left out the word so. He changed the word so to truly. You read it here in the mainstream media and Yahoo News. One more time. Take it away. Uh, if this is what it means to wake up, then we truly are fucked. And with that, I have to wrap up uh, this edition of the Hopium Breakdown. And uh, it is a busy weekend here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, Airbnb, and Hip Camp. We have a full camp uh, here today, so I need to get out there and uh, make sure all my happy little normies are having fun on this gorgeous weekend, and I highly suggest uh, you get out there and join the normies while you still can. Bye, guys. Okay, little dog. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Let's go join the normies while we still can. Uh.